Afternoon everyone and welcome to the Paper Lantern, otherwise known as the King and Queen. I'm Carl Gosling of The Social and this is Will Burns, the author of The Paper Lantern. Um, as promised we're here to talk about um, Will's forthcoming book um, and share a beer. Cheers Will, by the way. Cheers mate. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, The Paper Lantern, uh, which is coming out in June, right? July. July. Uh, started out if you didn't know, as a, as a series of posts on our website, thesocial.com, uh, uh, The Social Gathering. And uh, as I say, yeah, we're here today to, to, to have a chat about it. Um, Will, can you, could you tell us about the book in, in 30 seconds for those that perhaps didn't read the posts? Yeah, um, I suppose my, 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 my wish for it and, uh, you know, my, my hopes are that it comes across like, a, like the kind of meandering slightly melancholy um, sort of monologue that you might come across you know in a in a pub like this uh, you know you might find yourself sort of pinned to the pinned to the wall on a busy night or pinned to a pinned to a stall and um, and someone kind of you're making this sound really boring. Eh? <laughs> well, it, it's an insightful. Uh, it's more of an insightful text than that. I think. Yeah, but it's, yeah. It's not a drunken ramble. No, it's not it's a drunken. Thoughtful ramble. Yeah, it's literally a ramble. Yeah, it, it is a ramble in 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 in, in sort of all, all senses of, yeah. of that word. And um, but but to to to, to sort of to pick, pick up that point, uh, you know, uh, I also think that you know there are there are moments of sort of lucidity in pub conversations that quite often get get forgotten about and neglected and um, you know we quite often think of pub conversations as, as being like one generic kind of thing you know the, the, a bore gets hold of you and, uh, and doesn't doesn't let you go but every now and then and it probably is only every now and then um, you get a, you get a really good one and um, so yeah I, I hope it I hope it comes across like one of the good ones okay and so so uh, as, a, as a result of uh, the book came about as a result of you writing, um, I think it was 10 posts, wasn't it, for The Social Gathering, uh, which, uh, as far as I'm aware, started, well, The Social Gathering started almost exactly a year ago, so I guess you started writing this not, not far off now, a year ago. One of your early posts uh, said, um, or referenced the smell of wild garlic, and definitely smelling that again around the area so it must that, that that seems like an indicator that we must be coming around again yeah that, yeah that, that that's that's true actually i was just up in the in the woods a couple of couple of evenings ago and um it's very much uh returned very very present again in, in the in the in is the, that actual the garlic beach. at the bottom of it yeah the bulbs um, so i tried to dig it up with my daughter and uh, well you don't want to take the bulbs in wild garlic you want to take the you want to take the leaves so I mean, I think strictly speaking, the, the bulbs are are, are are supposed to stay where where they are. Okay. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, you, yeah, you just you cut the cut the foliage back and uh, take that. And so so th that's the difference between that and um, you know the, the regular garlic is that you're going to eat the leaves rather than the, the yeah. bulb. I can only ever smell it when I've done mowed the lawn, which isn't that often. But there's clearly some on on the grass. Or... Yeah, I think I've seen it in your in there your you garden. Go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, lo lovely stuff, and it was it was a sort of strange kind of symbol of that that time of year last year when we first, when everything sort of closed and um, and we had that kind of strange dislocation of our of of, of time and and um, the sort of day to day running of our lives. All of a sudden, people noticed things like that, didn't they? Birdsong, um, wild garlic. So the the the, the, the narrator. Uh, the, the posts were called "Where Do We Live Now," mm. um, and the uh, the narrator in those posts um, over a series of it wasn't quite ten ten weeks. It was it was slightly longer than that. I think it ended up being two two and a half months. Mm. But the narrator uh, essentially walks around this area, the local area around a fictional village, yeah. which we'll come to in a bit, and and talks about well, I mean. A, a, Lots of different subjects, but um, as you just touched upon, the the, the sort of the um, the sense of the the early lockdown and, and things all of a sudden changing was something that you 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 know started st kick started this series of posts. Um, the the narrator bears a striking resemblance to you <laughs> in lots of ways. 
um, but in other ways not. Um, and I suppose it's, it's 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 worth sort of starting off like asking you like how you know what, who, how close is the narrator's voice to your own? Because mm. um, I, I I can tell who the difference is, but then the, it is you know it is similar in a lot of ways. Yeah, I I think that the speaker is a little bit more misanthropic than I am. Um, pr probably a little bit um, a bit more uh, at odds with themselves. Um, and and kind of where they find themselves in an the earlier version of the world, you? yeah, or an alternative version maybe. Right. I, I sort of what one of the things that I was interested in when when you first asked about writing something for for the site um, was that I'd already started to think about what what it, what, what what bits of um, village life were were really in, intriguing to me, and the thing that the thing that really interested me was what was happening to my parents who who do run this pub the king and queen and they live here and um that's so the paper lantern yeah is this pub yeah pretty much yeah. um uh and um but yeah so that the first sort of month i suppose of uh of of that first um lockdown um i was really interested in 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 the ways that it was affecting their lives, you know, and and and, and every and, and it seemed to me that people that live in a pub and work in a pub were undergoing one of the more radical um, sort of transformations to their to their everyday life, um, and uh, and and so I, I I wanted to come up with a way of talking about what was what what was happening to them, um, and so I had to kind of reimagine myself as a version of me where I hadn't met my wife, I hadn't. You know, settle down to where I actually you live, live in real, you live in real the times. Time, yeah, you? yeah. So it was kind of imagining a version of me, a fairly easy to imagine version <laughs> um, that that might have ended up, you know, at forty with not a lot else going on other than, um, you know, a failed poetic career and, um, and and working every now and then behind the bar. But you do in real life actually work in this pub, right? And, and have a failed poetry career. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, those two bits are the at least. Fictional. Well, it's not, stri uh, not strictly true. We, no. we, we, one of the first posts on the social gathering was a celebration of Will's uh, collection of poetry called Country Music that came out. At the, well, it came out March. I'm going to say March the yeah. April the second. Uh, yeah, I think April first. I think April Fool's Day. April yeah. Fool's Day, 2020. One of the first posts we did. Mm. Um, it's, it's interesting that you touch on poetry, so I mean, I've. As a writer, I've only most people have only ever know, known you as a poet, and obviously this is quite a departure. And it was a departure that I sort of asked for, really, that day when we met up, um, walking down the road, which was odd in itself, because obviously it was. I think by the time we met up, we had already endured about two or at least three, four weeks, no, probably three weeks of lockdown, I reckon. Yeah. And I, I definitely remember being quite embedded because I remember it being very surreal. You were one of the first people who. Who I'd consider to be a you know a close friend who I'd bumped into, and it was, you know, it was, it was a it was a weird a weird thing, uh, but I remember saying to you at the time, it'd be great if you, I think it was actually off the back of Lias uh, from the Fat White Family yeah. having written some some fantastic pieces for us already, and you you were you know praising it, going, oh it's great, like I was like you should do something like that, you should write something longer like for us it'd be really amazing, and. The next two days later, you had, you know, you'd lit, written a 2,000 words. I don't know if it was long. The, yeah, the yeah. first post was relatively long and it was brilliant. And it, ha it obviously, I suppose my question is, is that it seemed to come quite easily to you after we had that conversation. And, you know, how, how did that process differ from the poetry? Uh, I presume your poetry wasn't flowing as much at that in that time. And, and then, you know, was this something that was sat there waiting to be written? Yeah. Um, well, I think that the, the, perhaps more interesting to me is actually the similarity between <clears throat> between writing what I wrote for the site and what's ended up becoming this book and, and, and the poems, because the differences are sort of material, really. You know, the differences are um, this is... Uh, you know, 180 pages of, of prose, um, and um, uh, whereas you know my poems it's tend the first to first time I've seen this book. <laughs> Sorry, I should just say not actually 
seen it before, so yeah, um, sorry. That's all right. Yeah, you know, my poems tend to be on the short side. They tend to be sort of s s some little lyrics, and um, but 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 it, but in, in from from my point of view, in, in terms of writing, um, what what was very similar was that that that. that it came about through a, a finding a voice and, and, and hitting upon um, a, a, a sound or a, a, a kind of um, an attitude or a style or something that was in the voice when I wrote the first sentence that, that enabled it to kind of generate its own, um, uh, you know, to, to, to generate its own energy and, and, yeah. and, it, and it just Well, there was energy, but you, didn't, you didn't find it hard. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm gonna say you didn't find it hard to write. But you clearly didn't struggle for words, because in the space of the ten posts, you wrote half of this book, I think, or yeah, maybe the a third, I don't know, but yeah. a lot, a lot of it. Yeah, so you you weren't struggling from any sort of lockdown kind of uh, writer's block, or, or no, no, and and I think to go back to the the, the, the previous previous question is is that that to, to some to, to a certain extent that is to do with elements of this being some material that was waiting to be written so you yeah, know there, sorry, are, yeah. there are there are anecdotes and there are ideas and there are thoughts that have probably been um you know uh that have been present in my thinking and my my imagination for a long time that that, that were waiting and some of it is an extension of the poetry yeah, um, yeah. I mean, the, you know, there's thematically, the, yeah, def yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, I sort of tend tend to think that, you know, it's different for uh, different for every writer. But I tend to think that you know, you have a certain, r relatively speaking, a small set of obsessions that that tend to kind of repeat and and, and become kind of uh, patternistic uh, it, over over the course of your writing. I mean, it could be that I just have a very s small set of interests, but uh, and don't go out much. But um, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, the, it. it thematically and, and in terms of imagery and stuff it is very similar to 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 the to the kind of the world of the poems but it, what you talk when you mentioned Lias's writing for the for the site that you're right that that very much um sort of ignited a little something in me I you know it, there was there was something about was competitive <laughs> <laughs> if I'm honest well you yeah I mean oh, no, you, that you, brings I mean, out you know, you you're able to you're able to draw on um, yeah, you, a long said, history of our friendship to uh, <laughs> to back that up. A lot, of, a lot of people that are watching this don't think of me in that way. I Carl, don't mean but. that. I just mean that it was you. You. Uh, you. you um, I don't. Uh, when you read the first Lias piece, you were like, "Wow, that's fucking great." Well, I, like, I, and I'm not. I'm not saying you were surprised because, like you say, you don't know Lias, but you probably knew a little bit about his band, maybe or something yeah. like that. But you were like, "Wow, that was." That's great. That's a really cracking piece of writing. Yeah, I got the sense that then you were like, I, okay, I might be able to, uh, I might be able to dash off a, a post for the social. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was it a bit like that? It, wait, do you know what? There was that, 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 if there's an element of that. Yeah, and but what it, but but, but on another level, it was it, it, you know I I just read and written about Mark Lanigan's biography as well. Yeah, autobiography, uh, memoir, um, and um, and those two. Those two pieces of work, really, Lias's first couple of posts, I'd say, mm. and um, Lanigan's book, um, <clears throat> got me thinking about, you know, the the, the uh, what function a really c cold eye could have on, um, on 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 the way that you go about describing your your you know selfhood and the situation that you find yourself in in in, in life. And all of a sudden, there was a situation that seemed worth recording. Um, and and uh, like I say, as much it was as much about recording the situation that my parents found themselves in yeah. as recording the speaker's situation. The speaker becomes much more prominent. Mm. Um, uh, but it, but initially, it was like you know I wanted to talk about um, you know certain sort of like yeah. set piece ideas. Uh, the pub was a big, and big that, thing, and that sort of developed into. Uh, that developed then into talking about the, the, this place mm. um, that in the you know in certainly in the posts uh, was referred to as the village I think in, in inverted commas yeah and um, you know something I mean we both live here so uh, it's not a village I mean it used to be a village but it's now specific, it's now um, uh, you know a town right? yeah um, but obviously I still refer to it as the village you refer to it as the village 
the cricket competition that happens on a Saturday afternoon is the Village Cup. And there is a sense of this sort of construction around the place mm. that, that, you know, it, it is a village. Um, and, and a lot of, I mean, what I suppose found, I found interesting and took particular joy in was certainly the first post was a, a bit of a takedown, wasn't it, of, 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 of some of that sort of sense of superiority that you witness around not just play, not just you know this village or this town, but you know lots of places or innumerable places around the country like it. Mm. Um, how, how did you how did you feel about that approach to you know I mean in in a sense really describing the place where you live and the place where you've grown up, uh, place where I was born, um, <laughs> as as toxic um, and and in and, and in a lot of ways in in quite sort of minute detail sort of talking about those those you know everyday kind of mm. aggressions or you know encounters uh you know was that the reason why the narrator isn't 100 percent you did you feel like you needed to make that distance or yeah i i, I mean like i say i think that this the narrator is 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 a little bit is a little bit more acid tongued um than i am um you know, in the sort of day-to-day -day sense, I'm fairly affable, um, sort of jolly fat man type, really. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, but I wanted the speaker to be a little bit more um, uh, acerbic, and um, and it, but but at, at the same time, obviously, that's communicating certain things that you know are in one's psyche, yeah. and, um, and 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 giving voice to some of those those thoughts. You know, it it, it is it is a place that has a kind of specific you know almost laughable pomposity at times like you say the idea that you know there is a, a, a you know a whole a whole populace of a place that sort of refuse to accept that it's a town and not a village including and, us um, well yeah <laughs> but, then, and, and, but then more interestingly you get to this you get into the realms of, of one of the things that's in the, one of the things that the, 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 the book is about for want of a better word is the, the slipperiness of, of taxonomy and right. categorization yeah. and yeah. Um, and how you know we make we make a you know the, it's a sort of cliche to use that phrase a, ca a category mistakes we don't make we make the mistake of category um, as well as you know making category mistakes if we believe that categories uh, you know exist and and, and I, I'm interested in the idea that if everybody calls it a village and yet there is there's some sort of pedantic um, uh, counterforce that says no it's a town because it's got this yeah. that or the other yeah. um, uh, uh, qualities of a town mm. it, uh, that seemed to me already uh, on the you know the very first line it seemed to me a sort of a, a point of interest because you know who, who, who's to say which yeah which which which, which point of view is, is is right and you know and that's all, as ever the truth is probably somewhere in between the two yeah there isn't a between the two in a village and a town. <laughs> no, fair enough. I think that you you then started to sort of um, you know widen out that that sort of uh, line of observation where you started to look at this place in particular and how you know as a a village, a place where where people are how how, how unusual and and a lot of the time uh, surreal it was. Specifically during that period, where everything was sort of surreal for everyone. I mean, it was a, it was a, a mad. You know, that first lockdown was particularly unusual for for all of us, I think. But all, but but that seemed to be heightened by this place in particular. This this middle, you know, part of Middle England, the actual middle of England, as you pointed out in one of the posts, sort of geographically speaking, or at least contestable by <laughs> <laughs> by several villages. But um, you know, we are quite literally in the middle of the map. And I, th I think you quote. I think the quote was, you know, nothing would ever penetrate us here. And you, you, you know, you do get that. You do get that sense in the writing, of, you know, even in the the peak of the pandemic and the peak of the crisis and disaster that was taking place in the hospitals and the care homes uh, at that period, that there was this sense of weird normality in in where we are. Um, and, and I thought that was, you know, a really you know, interesting. Um, I mean, it's certainly something that I recognised when I was walking around, and I found it weirder than being in the house, so I stayed in the house. Um, 
Yeah, you know, I think it's it, 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 this is the kind of place where I think I maybe even use the phrase in, 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 the, in the book, you know, the hammer, the hammer tends to fall elsewhere, you know, or, and if, if it does fall around here, it sort of, there is some kind of softening effect. Obviously, the softening effect is largely due to wealth and privilege and all those... All the proximity of checkers. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and regardless of the proximity of, 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 of checkers, you know, the fact that this is the kind of place where um, people commute to London to do a certain types of job mean that you know growing up around here and, and, and living here now you know you, when when I see people bemoaning um, the quality of of rail travel you know mm. in and out of other counties and other places it, it, uh, you know there's, there's part of me that, 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 that Sees that and, and, and can't recognise it. Sure, because, railways is superb. Yeah, and and, and, and that, but that's all. And that's all part of the, the same thing. Is that you know, it, 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 there is some, it, you know, it is wealth. It's privilege. Mm. It's it's everything that, and all of that stuff, of course, came into sharp focus last year as well. So as well as there being this kind of you know, the, the, this this enormous global event that impacted everybody. Um, there was there was other things that were happening that that, that that were linked to that and conversations about the nature of privilege, the nature of history in light of of, of, a, of a kind of decolonial um, movement and, and uh, ideas that we need to to, to to recalibrate our understanding of places like checkers of the the, the big housing uh, housing estates the big houses and estates that that make up the the countryside we're surrounded here. by yeah. yeah. And um, so it all seemed, I mean, you know, it just, it seemed, it seemed fruitful for those columns. And then mm -hmm. obviously, you know, that, that became, well, the columns that became something else. The columns but, yeah. touched on several uh, major topics, none of which we've probably got the, you know, time to, to deal with here. But you do, you know, you did talk about uh, Brexit. Um, and obviously, you know, you, you described, I think you described, you know, where we are as being the heart of Brexit um, country. Um, conservatism in, in, in both its senses, um, HS2, selective schooling, uh, land ownership, as you've already touched on, all against the backdrop of the ongoing pandemic at that time. And, um, and even, you know, um, you know, even concepts as broad as work, actually it seems to be something that you were really interested in as, and, and you know, the narrator, you know, at that time being out of work, the, the, the pub having lost its you know, function and being closed. Um, but work seems to be something that you were particularly interested in. Um, yeah. does, does, that, does that particular sort of subject, was that the, the narrator's own or are you also work shy? <laughs> no, no, I was gonna say the, the, the notion of being interested in work as a phrase um, is it, 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 it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because that's the one thing I've never really been interested in in some way. No, I, 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 that's not that's not quite true. Really, you've had jobs. I have had jobs. I've got a, a brilliant mind, better, much better mind than mine. Um, uh, poet, poet, and editor called Andrew McNeely once said to me um, uh, that he wasn't he wasn't afraid of work. He was afraid of employment, and I thought that was a yeah. brilliant way of putting it. Um, and uh, but yeah, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm obsessed, I suppose, with the way that we fetishize work um, in this country, the way we, the way we build identities out of it. Um, it's, it's endlessly fascinating to me. And, uh, and um, to go back to that, that initiating period and the, the, the sense of, um, of what it was that, 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 that kind of caught me and, and, and sort of, uh, uh, grabbed me really about uh, about those early weeks of the lockdown. Was working. <laughs> yeah, and and so what was happening? I mean, mm. so, you know, the the, the 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 landlord of the of the paper lantern, who's you know pretty much straight from drawn straight from my 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 dad. So does your dad? Sorry, does the landlord feature more in the finished book than he does in the post? No, not 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 particularly. Um, the 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 the, 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 the material that comes after the after the um, after the post is this Gandalf hair <laughs> migrated into my mouth. Um, 
the, yeah, the, the, no, the material that's come after the post is, 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 is all quite pertinent to the, to the speaker them, themselves, the, the narrator, sort of really locating them in their, in, their, in their lives and why they feel the way they do about, about certain things, sort of relighting the, the, the ideas in the, in the post. But yeah, you know, I was, I was really interested in you know, what would happen to somebody like my father who, for whom work was, you know, was it was 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 much more than just a job, much more than just a, a you know, a, an hourly mm. um, transaction between time and money. He's never he's never re he never worked for anybody else really to speak of. Mm. He's always he's always r r run his own businesses. And the pub is such an interesting mix of social life, mm. employment, dangerous. If you're very dangerous, as I know, as yeah. I know from running the social, it's yeah. You know, yeah, you, you, you um, know, you know better than me. But you know, certainly in the early years of working there with a seemingly unlimited tab, like yeah. you know, it was, it was, you know, you'd go down there. Your best friends are in there. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, from my, from my dad, it's yeah. like that's the way we see him. He's, he, he, my he's, family come in. And he spoke so very clearly in relation to your dad's uh, character, anyway, in the book about an erosion of identity. Yeah, and that your your fear about that. And um, you know, uh, uh, your parents all right? Uh, you know, the, the pub's closed. Presumably, yeah. they're making plans for a couple of weeks, right? Yeah, yeah, two two weeks. The garden's going to be open, is it? Garden's going to be open, and you know, it looks great. And you know, my 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 my, my folks, um, you know, they they handle everything last year. You know, it was brilliant, great. I thought, but the pub um, was ace. I mean, it, it felt like dead pro like you know sort of welcoming like things were done properly and, yeah uh, it was a there was a lot of um uh, there was a lot of you know uh, people who were unsure about whether we should all be going to the pubs back in the summer last year mm. and i think that was fair enough and you know i had my misgivings about it myself but coming here and having a beer you know you, you definitely felt like you were being looked after properly and people were doing things the right way so I'm looking forward to them re reopening. Yeah, I mean, I think as an industry, really, that, that, that you know, everything that you read around that time was that the pubs did everything they could, and mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, it wasn't a sort of mismanaged <coughs> situation. Obviously, you know, it's 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 so it's such a difficult, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, pressure point of you know um, people socialising and you know people people. Yeah, uh, interacting and all the things that, that that were supposed to be, you know, the, the real danger uh, sort of areas for for, yeah. the, for the disease. At the sa and at the it's same really time, something that was so, something that felt, I think everybody realised quite how much um, we, we, we 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 rely on it in this oh, country. It was needed, and, um, it was needed. Know, yeah. yeah, it was needed for you know mental, you know the mental health. Uh, we don't need to talk about the mental health impact of, of COVID because I think it's you know it's plain for everyone to see in either sort of you know little ways or, or you know sort of deep, deeply you know uh, hard ones um but the ability to be able to actually s see some people in an environment where um people relax a little bit you know is hu hugely important um the, the book um talks about all these really big subjects and it talks about this place and places like it and history and all these other, you know, uh, interesting, interesting topics that that um, uh, that you touch on, but all of it's sort of set um, in the in, with this backdrop of um, nature, the natural. Um, I think it's worth noting that you know all, all of this, all of the writing came off the back of you being a, a, a committed walker, um, and you know, lot, lots of the. The narration is, is based on those walks and you talking about the natural um, the, the natural world um, interest in birds the allotment um, and, and and the surrounding chalk hills where, where we live but also the ancient um, be that the Ipnil way or the um, the Ridgeway or the Bronze Age form mm -hmm. up there and, um, is that something that um, has always interested you it's certainly something that came through perhaps more uh obviously in your poetry um but i i particularly enjoyed the the extension of that in, in, in the 
posts. Yeah, you could, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you can do something slightly different with all that kind of knowledge, not knowledge, I don't have any knowledge, but um, you can do something different with your, your interest um, in those things in prose than you can um, in poems because you've got a different set of kind of um, uh, additional pressures or additional kind of ideas that you've got you've got your you've got your eye on. Um, yeah, so I mean, I've I've always been interested in history. Um, I'm certainly since I was a child, been interested in um, wildlife, particularly birds. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I had a I had a I mean, it all sounds very un, un, uninspiring and, and cliché, but I had, you know, a sort of uh, one of those kind of formative relationships with a grandparent who took me fishing and bird watching, um, and you know, told me about uh, the, the different animals. And, one, one of the things I can't forget, and I'll probably, I don't know, if this is a, a, a um, huge praise for the book or the post or not, but one of the things that I can't get out of my head is um, Culver's uh, never never having known the word culver for a, a wood pigeon yeah uh, and, and uh, i don't know if this is a, some sort of um uh, some sort of symbol but this morning as i was looking out the window um a um the biggest culver i've ever seen landed on the fence outside my um outside my kitchen window i mean he was so fat they are yeah. so fat yeah and it, like really like and it had something in its mouth as well like proper like it was sort of it had eaten so much it couldn't eat the thing in its yeah. mouth but Good living around here, for right? A wood pigeon, yeah. very, very good living. Mm. Um, you know, very few predators, right? A pair of peregrines in Aylesbury, um, okay. And uh, they live up the castle, yeah, right? Yeah, um, uh, but other than that, you know, I didn't know there was peregrines in Aylesbury. Well, I, I think last summer there the, the was a the nest camera was, was going again. It's I, a I, big 1960s, um, uh, uh brutalist, brutalist kind of um, yeah. tower, um, not yeah. tower block, it's um. The county offices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I yeah. think I think it's sort of. I think it's protected. Yeah, half famous. I think in, right. in, in sort of brutalist architectural okay. terms. Um, yeah, we should, talk, so, we should talk about Aylesbury at some point because I, 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 I sorry, we're sort of going all over the place. And we're, I was talking about, about I was talking about <laughs> the natural world and the ancient. <laughs> I, wanted ah, you, right. I, wanted you, <laughs> I wanted you to tell me about the um, the dig that happened and the remains that were found, but mm. uh, people can read the book. Yeah, it's all in there. We'll find out about that. Um, but Aylesbury was something because I, I I was brought up in Aylesbury, and um, I always felt like it was on the periphery of what you were talking about. And for me, it was always like, why are you going to Aylesbury? Why don't you talk about Aylesbury? It'd be really interesting to talk about Aylesbury. Mm. And you sort of do. And I don't know whether you do more in the book, but you sort of you you pull back from the big town, don't you? Um, is that is that something to do with that intrinsic sort of force field around this place where we live? And um, you don't. You know, you personally probably don't go to Ellsbury very often, do you? I, I don't go to Ellsbury very often. Um, uh, you know, the, the, it, it, yeah. Is it I mean, fear? It's fear. Still, yeah. it's still, 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 still. There's still a few people who are looking for me in Ellsbury, mate. Um, <laughs> the first time I ever met Will, I, I don't know if this if you remember this, but the first time I ever met Will was at kicking out time in Aylesbury. Uh, on a Saturday night, and you lived above a kebab shop. Uh, no, I lived above a bar. Oh, okay. Eminem, the one on the corner. Right. Yeah. Well, I was in the kebab shop. Right. Uh, which was called. Can't it was. Now, it, it was. A, it was um, my friend Wokus's. It was his dad. Yeah. The one on the one with the, next to the Sainsbury's. Next to the Sainsbury's. Yeah, yeah. It's the first time I ever met you. Yeah. You were in the middle of the road, sort of a bit like that. And I was with Adam Killip. Anyway. So you, you know, we've got shared yeah. his, shared history of Aylesbury. Yeah. Um, but no, sorry, I interrupted you. So that was good. That <laughs> kebab shop's sort of legendary. Oh, wait, no, a couple of good Oasis. stories about that kebab shop. No, that's not Oasis. No. Oasis is down on Cambridge Street. Right. Um, but anyway, so the, yeah. the 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 Ail the Aylesbury sort of looms for me because it's such mm. a big big presence in the area, the big town. But did you go into it in any more detail? Is that is that the next book? No. <laughs> It, no, it, 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 I, I don't think it'd be the, the next book. I mean, the, the, the thing about the thing about you know your your places or one's places is that you know it, it, that you have to know you have to know them for them to kind of generate the the, the material to 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 to, um, to work with. And you know, I don't know Aylesbury well. There, there, there is there is a bit more of it. There's some I think small towns have been written about quite a lot. They, they well. have, but you know what. What's interesting about what you say about even between even the difference between 
a village in the in the kind of orbit of a of a of a town like Aylesbury. And Aylesbury's, you know, the county town, nominally the sort of the the, the, the centre of the county, even though we you know that, that there, there are there are bigger towns. I don't think um, there are, are there? Well, isn't High Wycombe in Bucks, strictly yeah, speaking? Yeah, I don't know if High Wycombe is bigger than Aylesbury. It might not be. No. Anyway. And, yeah, but, the, but the, 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 the point is that even with, so the, there's even a difference in the way that you know, you, you, we could see, you, you see, um, writing about the villages and, and, and somebody writing about the town, and you, you, know, you feel that there's a kind of, uh, you know, almost a sort of um, sub-interest in those kinds of towns. And, and, and that's really what I feel... The, the is a sort of nationwide view of this part of the, the country you know I, I, I I've had conversation with people where they're like um, you yeah, but, but this isn't the, this isn't the countryside is it you know because they think they it is too accessible from <laughs> London you know you, you, you if, if you can me, me and Sophie had that exact conversation uh, I think probably the first time she came to Wembley yeah. was that you know she was like this isn't, you know, yeah. it's not the proper countryside. But, but, but of course, yeah, exactly. And it, uh, you know, I think do you view it as the proper countryside? Well, I'm, I, 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 again, we get onto na to notions of categorisation and taxonomy. I'm, I think, what is it that you, what is it that you want from the countryside? Do you want to go to the Lake District and there be a, 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 a high street in a village that's got fifteen outdoor clothing shops, do you a row hand, do you think a that's New what Balance outfit? To protect in in Wendover by push back on things like chain uh, restaurants or, or which is which is a kind of nonsense in itself right so so the, the pushback against that is like the countryside the countryside can't be a high street full of outdoor shops <laughs> and the countryside can't be uh, a high street full of chain coffee shops the countryside can be this the countryside can't be that mm. I'm interested well, I think that's that's in essence why yeah. people call it a village it's uh, the, the idea of a town and the countryside are almost like incompatible. Yes. Yeah. Um, that, unless you're in Yorkshire, and then yeah. like you know you're you're so clearly surrounded by like the countryside that yeah, it's but irrefutable. But apart apart from the, again, I get I get you know it's, it, it, we get into the notions of, of what what makes the country. You know this this is an area of special scientific interest. It's an area that that, that over indexes on things like wild orchid species. In the you know the, in the, the rag pits down the road, you know I can't remember the exact figures off the top of my head, but two hundred odd chalk streams in the Chiltern Hills, or you know I think two hundred in the southeast of England actually, <coughs> but but you know out of out of two hundred and eighty worldwide yeah. uh, chalk streams, you know a unique and very specific environmental feature. Yeah. Um. And and uh, you know that and the Chiltern Hills vastly. Um, outnumbers anywhere else in, yeah. for, for, for chalk streams uh, and, and so you know we've got all these things that under any other circumstances people would, would, would call that a kind of feature yeah. of the countryside unique environment yeah. um, you know area of special scientific interest and yet people are sort of like oh it's the suburbs mate too close to London yeah um, so I do I do take your point about about, about Aylesbury and, 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 and those kinds of towns yeah. um, and you know I yeah, it it, it 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 is something for for for, for further in, inquiry yeah. by someone. I mean, you know, and maybe me. It won't be me. I've always said I've always said that um, I've always said that I thought you know you had a um, a book in you. Uh, I didn't say it to you. Uh, I probably should have done. Uh, maybe I did that day on the street. I don't know. I don't think I did. This book happened as a result of uh, you um, responding to. a you know, a passing comment really from me about writing for the site, and we're extremely grateful that you did. And I'm really happy that it turned into, you know, something that we can sort of hold here in our hands. Uh, and like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud. Um, thank you, Will. No, thank like, you, Carl. This has been lovely, and it's been very nice to sit in a pub and have a beer, um, which is a bit of a privilege, and which we're allowed to do because we are working. Um, but um, I want to thank you for writing for the site. Um, congratulations on your book, which is out in July. Um, go and buy it, go and pre order it, everyone who might be watching this. And um, yeah, thanks again, man. Cheers. No, thank you. Cheers, Cheers. Carl. Take care. Good job.